So there are six things that you need to master if you want to call yourself a React developer and if you want to get a front-end developer job. And these six things are absolutely mandatory. I will not consider you a React developer if you don't know these six things. And I'm gonna give you at the end a bonus, uh, a quick test that's gonna show how good of a React developer are you, okay? So the first thing that you need to know, or like the, yeah, the first thing that you need to know are classes, right? The, the, the class-based component architecture. And I know a lot of people are saying, hey, you shouldn't learn classes, you should learn hooks. Probably most people don't even mention classes anymore in their courses, in their tutorials, and that's absolutely insane in my opinion. Uh, people say that classes are outdated, and in a, in a way they are right. Nobody is really using classes anymore. But there are a few exceptions. So the reason why you should learn classes is because you might get a job, sorry, the fly is here. You might get a job where uh, the code they wrote was, I don't know, in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. And believe it or not, companies are not jumping on the hype of a new technology right away. So even though you are learning, I don't know, Next.js right now, people might still use React like, uh, uh, React created with Create React App, which used to be the de facto uh, way of creating an application a few years ago. Okay, so you might jump into that, and if you don't know how to use classes, you'll be having a bit of a trouble, okay? Also, classes will help you understand hooks way better. Because all, all the time people are saying hooks are way better than classes, right? Or like hooks are so good, all right? Hooks are so easy to understand. Easy to understand compared with what? Because if I say, hey, uh, do you like pizza? You'll say, yeah, but if you never tried a burger, would you be able to choose between a pizza and a burger? No, it's impossible. So you have to try both to understand if you like pizzas or more, or in this case, to understand why all the hype is about pizza. So learn about classes, they will help you out massively. And there are a few things that classes help you out uh, with that hooks are not. I'm not going to get into it right now because you should do your own research because if you do your own research, that's when you're actually learning, right? So right now you are doing something called passive learning. I'm spitting stuff at you and you are just taking it in, hopefully. But if you do your own research, that's when you actually internalize information and I recommend you uh, to do that, okay? Now, the next thing that you need to know as a React developer is not even a React thing, it's JavaScript. And most specifically, you should understand data transformation. So what do I mean by that? Imagine you have uh, a few ingredients in your fridge and you want to cook a breakfast, right? You want to prepare a breakfast for yourself and for your girlfriend or for your boyfriend or whatever you have, okay? Well, what I've seen most of the time in regular programming courses and uh, in most juniors' portfolios is that they take an egg, they boil the egg, and they, they eat the egg, okay? They never even bother thinking about maybe I could fry the egg a little bit in, uh, I don't know, in uh, butter, then I can add some bacon, maybe I can add some chopped onions, and then I can have a salad made of tomatoes and cucumbers and feta cheese. Right. So what have I done there? I have combined certain ingredients to create a more rounded dish, if that makes sense. And it actually works in a similar way in programming. Most of the time, what you will see is a lot of data combined to create a different type of data. Um, for example, when you are on Facebook and you see that a post has, I don't know, 300 comments. Well, that number was created by reducing the total amount of comments and replies into a number. So there are not different data entities, it's just one big data structure cooked into one number, okay? That was a data transformation. There are so many other examples, like for example, take a shot for every single time I say example. For example, you could have a to-do app and then a filter at the top, right? So as you type in something in the to-do app, then the list becomes smaller because it's gonna match whatever you typed in the filter. That's a data transformation. And then you can have another, I don't know, maybe a drop-down that sorts the data. So you filter the data, you 
sort the data and then you display it and you give it to the user okay so that's data transformation and you should know that i can guarantee you that's going to make you a strong front-end developer and uh, it's going to help you create more interesting applications which in fact or in turn will get you paid okay because that's why we are doing this to get paid not to have fun there are other things that are way more fun than writing code trust me okay but to get to do those fun things you need to learn how to code or go plumb the next thing that you need to learn is context and how to use it and when not to use it i'm not going to get too much into this because it's so simple and uh, yet so complex uh, you need to understand <clears throat> Because most people use context to store data, right? But that's not the only use case for uh, context. It's it's a good use case for uh, using context, but it's not the only use case. So I would highly recommend it to get into like the nitty gritty of how context works and whatnot. Again, I'm not gonna get into this right now because uh, this video is gonna get too long. Then the next thing that you need to learn is routing. Um, I recommend people to start uh, their React journey by not using Next.js and using the play React, maybe with React Router DOM um, and trying to understand how routing works and how to create dynamic routes and whatnot, or how to protect certain routes from, uh, from intruders. That's gonna help you out as well because every application that you see online has some sort of routing. Pretty much all websites have some sort of routing. You need to understand this concept. Then the next thing is to understand uh, custom hooks. So in the beginning, I told you that classes are important. You should know those. Um, and then I told you that, you know, people say that hooks are better than classes. I agree to a certain extent, uh, but then you should also learn how to create your own custom hooks. So I'm building my own CRM right now, a SaaS application where I track everything that's happening inside the business. And oh my, I'm, I'm creating so many custom hooks. It's unbelievable. This is such a useful concept. And you as a front-end developer, uh, as a React developer, you should absolutely know how to create custom hooks and you should know when to create a custom hook and you should know when not to create a custom hook. That's my opinion. Um, then API calls, you should learn how to make API calls because you need to learn how to pull data from outside. Uh, that's going to be very beneficial because pretty much all apps rely on a server, an API that's going to give you the data and you as a front-end developer will pull that data, display that data and let the user interact with the data, create new data, etc, etc. So this is an absolutely mandatory thing. You should know the most popular HTTP verbs. You should know the most popular HTTP status codes like 500, 200, 404, 403. Uh, again, I'm giving you ideas and I want you to go ahead and research these things on your own so you can actually understand uh, uh, how those concepts come together, okay? Now, as a bonus, I promised you a bonus. This is a test I give to all my students because we do mock interviews uh, every week uh, because I believe that interviewing is a skill that you need to practice it. I don't know how most aspiring developers are trying to wing the interview part of the process of getting a job, but we do that every week. So if you join my program, pl plug intended, uh, shameless plug, uh, you are going to get one interview per week, or you're gonna attend one interview prep a week. You can watch me interview other people and then you can learn how an interview actually works or how it looks, how it feels, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get used to it whenever you are gonna have an interview. But besides that, I want you to go on Google and type in F1 reaction test. And the first result should be f1-start.glitch.me. And that's a very simple application that simulates uh, your reaction time. So let me just, basically I press start. I need to wait for the lights to go out. Ah, and now I have a jump start. So now I need to reset. So that's my reaction time. So this silly game, wait, this silly game that you see here might look very simple, yet childish, but this is going to test your knowledge of timers, of hooks, of custom hooks, 
uh, and we will see how good you are at using the base API of React. So far, from what I remember, I gave this test to like 20 people, only one person managed to pass it, okay? That's how hard it is. But if you take this test and if you can pass it, if you can build this app, that means you really understand how React works, okay? All the other stuff that I mentioned are important, but this is gonna be the big test, which is gonna show you what you are made of, all right? So I hope this video helps. If you want me to help you make this career change as fast as possible, so you can work remote as a front-end developer, then apply for my mentorship. That's the first link in the description. If you wanna check out the program before you join, that's the second link in the description. And if you want my roadmap of applications that I used to sell for 50 bucks, you can get it now for free by clicking the third link in the description. So with that out of the way, I wish you a great day. Bye.